Curiosity. When our children come home from school, we'd like to ask them, what did you learn today? We value their curiosity and we want to encourage it. Do we value the same level of curiosity in ourselves? When was the last time you asked yourself, what did I learn at work today? Why is it important to maintain our curiosity? What happens when I'm not curious? Am I losing out on something? I argue that we do. Poor performance is a common side effect of lack of curiosity. When I was in college, my major was aerospace engineering. And by the time I was a senior, uh, I was taking a lot of math and science-based courses in furtherance of that major. However, I also had to take a couple of extra classes in order to fill a minimum credit load. So I figured it might be nice to take an English class as a break from all the math and science. So I signed up for patterns and drama. Well, I learned a value lesson about motivation when I took that class. As it turns out, you can't understand the patterns in a drama if you don't read the dramas that are assigned to you. So I ended up getting a C. And what I learned from that experience was that having internal motivation, wanting to study the material, being engaged with it was much more important uh, than the diversity of thought that I might have had otherwise uh, by taking English and engineering classes at the same time. Another pitfall we can, we can find ourselves in when we are no longer curious about what's going on uh, is a fragility of knowledge, the inability of the knowledge that we do have to adapt to the situations that we're in. The famous physicist Richard Feynman described in his book, The Pleasure of Finding Things Out, the an example of a thing he called a cargo culture. In the South Pacific, there were these islands that the Allies visited uh, during the war where they would bring cargo planes uh, filled with goods that the natives had never seen before. And then after the war, they continued to want those things to be brought to their islands. So what did they do? They mimicked what the Allies had done. They built long runways out of grass. They lit fires at front and back. They actually built a tower and put a man up in the tower with some wooden uh, headphones that they had put on, a little wooden microphone, and big bamboo antennas. It all looked correct. They were following what they had thought was bringing it in, but the airplanes obviously never came. Uh, and so what they didn't understand was a lot of the underlying assumptions about why they were doing what they were doing. And obviously it wasted a lot of their resources and the time. So in my current work as a flight instructor, how can I apply curiosity to my new students? It's important to realize that curiosity is required in order to execute the tasks that we ask them to do. Large quantities of information need to be readily accessible so that they can make complicated decisions in a quick manner. Literally, there are hundreds of buttons and switches inside a cockpit, and when you're moving at 700 miles an hour relative to other people, it can be really important to know when you hit what button what outcome you're going to get. And the only way you'll get that is through constant repetition. Um, frankly, I can't spoon, fee spoon feed that knowledge to the students either. Just because I know it doesn't mean you know it. And because of the complex situations you'll find yourself in, it's important to have that knowledge at a ready so that you can call on it when needed. As well as it's not 1v0 or one person against uh, nobody out there. There are other people competing uh, for the same goals uh, in a wartime scenario. So it's important to understand that the environment gets a factor too. What happens if one of my assumptions is no longer correct, such as in the cargo cult? Can I take this one away? Will I still get the same output? Or if I do three, these three steps before this other one, will I still expect that system to operate the way that I need it to? Uh, those are important questions to ask and things you have to do ahead of time. And the motivation to do that should come internally uh, as opposed to other places. Eventually, obviously, we don't want robots um, out there fighting our wars for us. We want people thinking and feeling uh, and understanding the situations that they're in. As far as the last bit of motivation, I'll call upon Winston Churchill to give us a quote. He once said, to every person there comes in their lifetime a special moment when they are tapped on the shoulder and offered that chance to do a very special thing unique to them and fitted to their talents. What a tragedy if that moment finds them unprepared and unqualified for the work that would be their finest hour.